Now let's get into the questions and how we'll be able to answer some of these questions. So these are sample questions uh, for an interview with a job title, uh, information security analyst. Okay. So for an information security analyst, so some of the general questions they will ask you, what you know, salary range are you looking for, right? So maybe I'll say, oh, I'm looking for anything between 100 and 120. Mm, you know, I mean, like that is, uh, okay, 100 and, I mean, like 20,000 uh, difference. If they give you 110, you are good, 100, you're okay. Uh, maybe somebody might also see that to be uh, maybe too wide of a gap, but frankly, I don't think it is. Right. Uh, if I say 100 to 160, then it's too wide of a gap. Right. So 100, 110, or 120 is fine. Or 90 to 110, uh, you know, like the gap is not that crazy. Okay. And then also, you should know how much you want in terms of uh, hourly uh, wages. Okay. So knowing your yearly is good, but break it down and know your hourly. Because if you don't know your hourly and maybe probably they tell you they're going to give you $35 an hour and you are happy, maybe that is not going to be up to your 100 you are looking for, right? So just know your hourly rate as well. You can easily just, you know, do some small math and break that down and have uh, what you are looking for hourly. Okay? And then also in terms of salary, uh, one thing that we teach our students is uh, some companies who will try or uh, some companies might want to look at uh, how, by, like bringing you on as a 10 uh, 99 contractor or they will you know employ you as a normal uh, employee of the company so that will be a w2 and a 1099 so if you don't know the difference between that and you know in terms of your tax obligations and stuff please look into that so 1099 and uh, w2 so w2 is a normal employer the company will pay, you know, uh, half, I think, or some percentage of your taxes and your social security. You do, you're also going to pay your uh, uh, part of your social security and your taxes and stuff. But the whole burden is not on you. With 1099, they're just going to give you the money. And then you have to figure out your taxes and stuff on your own, right? But, so depending on what you are looking for, uh, if they are giving you maybe 90000 for W-2, uh, 1099 should be way higher because you'll be paying your own taxes on that money, right? And if you are an employer, so if you employ, let, let me just give you some background for you to understand it well. So if an employer is paying you $100,000, the cost of payroll to the employer, when it comes to just you, is not $100,000. It's probably like 130. dollars when they add all the taxes and social security they have to pay on top of whatever they are paying you, uh, it's probably going to be like 130, right? So uh, if they they are going to uh, incur 130 and they give you the option of paying you 120 instead of uh, 100,000, but they're going to pay you as a 1099, you know, and you're happy to take it. Guess what? you're going to be running at a loss because now you'll be paying yourself almost 80,000 or 85 because the rest of it is going to go into taxes and social security. Okay, but they save themselves $10,000, <laughs> right? So just, it depends on what you are looking for. Uh, and then, you know, uh, like what you, it, it all, you know, comes down to what, what you are really uh, looking for. So choosing between W2 and 1099, uh, it depends on what you are really looking for. Some people just want to be contractors. Some people want to be you know, employees. Okay? So uh, look into that, please, if you don't know the difference between those. And a question like, uh, so one question, tell us about yourself and your previous experience, right? So if you're already in the industry, tell us about yourself and your previous experience. You'll be tempted to talk more about what you've done, what you've done, what you've done, and you know what you are doing in your current job and, all that is good, right? Uh, if you are trying to break into the industry, uh, with the example that I gave, you used to be a nurse. Are you going to talk about what you used to do as a nurse? Or what exactly are you going to talk about, right? So a way around, tell us about yourself. And if you don't practice this question, this is not a technical question, but it's probably going to make or break you during the interview. Because some people will just go on and on and on talking about where they went to school, where, you know, they took security plus and they 
I mean, all that is good, but that is not what they are looking for. I told you, employers, they only understand one language, how you are able to, how you'll be able to help them, right? So although they care about what you've done at whatever job that you used to do, their main goal is, what are you going to do for them when they employ you? So tell us about yourself. Always tie, tell us about yourself to the job description, right? Everything that you are going to say, talk, uh, like uh, uh, everything that you are going to say uh, should be in relation to what they are looking for, okay? So if, first off, uh, maybe um, uh, John, uh, I'm a cybersecurity professional. Uh, I've been working in the industry for this long, or I'm just, you know, looking to break into the industry. I've done this training, that training. Uh, my my specialty or like uh, my skill sets, uh, like my most uh, dominant skill sets and knowledge is in this area, right? And whatever area you're talking about should be in relation to what they are looking for. Because if they are looking for somebody to be the RX analyst and all you've done is maybe your training was all in penetration testing, uh, you know, you should be able to really break down what skill sets in penetration testing applies to this, right? Either than that, if you just say, I'm a pen tester, they are not the ones who are going to figure it out and figure out how pen testers can also, you know, what skill set that they have that is going to make them successful as a RICS analyst, right? So you have to be able to, uh, whatever skill set you have, tailor it to match what they are looking for and speak to that. I hope that makes sense to everybody, right? I mean, if we are looking at like a specific job description, then we can really go deep and, you know, uh, be more uh, specific and talk about that, right? But on like, in general, you should just, you should just be tailored towards what they are looking for, okay? And another question, so these are general questions that mostly get people. Uh, why should we hire you over uh, other people or other equally qualified candidates like yourself, right? And this is where uh, you make your money when it comes to doing your research about the company in terms of their mission and their vision, right? So if you know what the company is all about, what they are looking for, or what they are looking, where they are looking to get to in the future, you will be able to speak to that because you will speak to that in the sense of this is what you think they are doing uh, or like this is their mission or their goal and also speak something similar. If maybe your goals align with what they have, you can also speak to that. And then where they want to get to with my skill set and knowledge in this area, uh, I will be able to, you know, maybe probably, let's say you are being employed to handle the Rx. You know, I'll be able to handle the Rx in such a way that it is not going to be a burden or a headache for the general business aspect of the company. So that area will be able to focus on building the company So that is how you'll be able to. So if you are speaking to that, then it means, okay, this is what you are bringing to the table. This is what you know about the company. You'll be able to help the company to get from point A to point B. So that is what qualifies you more than anybody else who is there. Regardless, if you are speaking to this, uh, somebody might be there with more experience or more knowledge than you, but they're going to hire you because they are not just looking for more experience and more knowledge. They are looking for people with solutions and they are looking for people who are going to help them to get to where they are going to, right? So they don't want somebody with all the knowledge and all the skills and they've been working in cybersecurity for 15 years and they ask him, why should we hire you over other people? Oh yeah, because I'm the most qualified and I have this and I have this certification. Other people have the same certification. So why should we hire you over somebody else, right? If you don't prepare for this, I'm telling you, you're going to be stuck. Now you are thinking, okay, what answer is wrong? Which one is right, right? There is no wrong or right answer, but the trick is what I've just shown you, right? Speak the language the employer understands. Either than that, everything else that you're saying, uh, they are just nodding, but they are not really listening to what you are saying, right? And why do you want to work for a company? This is similar to uh, why should we hire you over you know, somebody else. So why do you work for the company? Same thing, if you know about the company, you can speak to that. So I know your company, you do A, B, C, and D. This is your mission and this is your vision. So this is where you want to be, uh, like where you want to get to. Uh, maybe probably you like what the company is doing. 
or your personal uh, goals also align with the goals of the company. So that is one reason, something that is going to attract you, like that is where, uh, that is something that is going to attract you to the company, right? So whether that is what is really attracting you to the company or is their money, nobody really cares, right? It's up to you. But you have to make them know that this is why you want to work for the company. Please don't tell them because your pay is good. <laughs> that is because your pay is good. It's going to benefit you, not them, right? So, like I said, always say something that's going to benefit them, not you. So although your pay is good, your package is good. And if you speak to that, then you are being selfish. But guess what? Your employer is more selfish than you. So you have to tell them to be more selfish, right? So speak to what they want, not what you are going If you give them what they want, you're also going to get what you want, okay? But if during interviews, you are just going to speak about, oh, the pay is good. And I think it's going to be what most people will say is going to be a good, uh, I'm going to gain more knowledge and I'm going to gain more, uh, 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 like build myself in terms of, you know, growing in the car. You think they really care about you growing in the, like in the cybersecurity field? They don't. What they care about is what you're going to do for them, right? So uh, why do you want to work for us? Don't say it's a good learning environment for me to know uh it should always be to what the company where the company wants to go and how you'll be able to help them to get there okay uh what do you know about our company that is straightforward if you don't they didn't do your research about them you'll be stuck and the funny part about this is if they ask you a question like this and you don't know it means one you don't pay attention to detail because for every job description the first portion of it, they write about their company. Arrhythmus Inc. is a consulting firm, a service credit consulting firm based in New York. We do A, B, C, and D. This is what we, you know. So if you skip that and you just want to look at the job description and apply for it, and during the interview, I ask you, what do you know about our company? And you're like, oh, I don't really know. I mean, I was waiting to get employed to know about it. It means you really don't pay attention to detail. And paying attention to or attention, the scale of attention to detail is a critical skill in cybersecurity. Very critical. I mean, I'd rather have somebody who pays attention to detail than uh, somebody who is very, you know, who has a lot of technical knowledge and skills and years of experience. But then simple things are just going to pass them by without them knowing. Because in cybersecurity, it's a very simple and easy things that will, you know, make or break the company, right? Yes. So uh, attention to detail, one of the best or one of the critical soft skills that is needed. So during the interview, they are not going to ask you, do you pay attention to detail? But questions like these are going to show whether you pay attention to detail or not, because it was uh, even knowing about your company, you don't even have to Google it. It was part of the job description. <laughs> right. So if you you go to the interview with no knowledge, then it means, you know, uh, you, you, you just shot yourself in the foot, right? So how did you, uh, how did your previous employment, and I think we talked about this extensively last week, but the best answer to this is your contract just ended, right? Or it's about to end, because regardless, when they employ you, you're gonna leave your previous job